But I, if you got your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 11, and I'm calling this the voice of faith. You know, this is something that I haven't taught on, a subject I, I haven't taught on for a little while. My wife said, I thought you always talked about faith. <laughs> I said, well, I always do. But I, I tell you what, there's, there's something that, that I want you to hear tonight. And I, I believe that as I was, you know, I've been extremely busy just here lately, as many of us get sometimes. And in those times when we get busy, what I do is I try to really spend a lot of time on the road driving in prayer or listening to the Word of God, just trying to make sure that I stay fed. Because it's easy to get, it's easy to get uh, busy with our lives, and we can, we can, if we're not careful, get distracted and, and not have the ability to, um, to, uh, to really be sensitive to the Lord. And uh, that's imperative in my line of work, obviously, and what I'm called to do. But it really is something that we ought to all have. And, and we want to have the, the hear, be able to hear the voice of God, but we want to hear faith speak. And, and, and this is the way I want to relate this today as I, was, as I was driving around praying. This is what the Lord just kind of showed me. So let's look at Mark 11, 22, because it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, uh, sorry, 11, 22, is that what I said? 11, 22, it says, he said to his disciples, have the faith, uh, have faith in God. Now that's a very simple, small little statement, but very powerful in its, in its working. Because he said, have faith in God. Now you've got to understand who's saying this to. First of all, he was saying this to men in, who had grown up all of their life. The Jews were very uh, religious, and there was a lot of requirements, and there was a lot of work that went into their prayer and, and their, or their their prayers and their study, and they had to say so many things and recite so many things and study, and so they knew what he meant when he says had when he said have faith in God, and he had, and he said have faith in God, but the way that really could be translated and many some of the translations translated as have the faith of God. So if you have faith in God, or you have, but then you also can have faith, the faith of God. See, the Bible says we, we've all been given a measure of faith. We've been given grace. We've been given things. When you, when you make Jesus the Lord, you need to, you need to realize something. And, and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm sure that most of you do, but there may be some who are watching or some that are right here, that you don't understand that when you make Jesus Lord of your life, you just became a child of the King. You, you just became something that was different, something that was more valuable. There was a change that happened as a result of God being in your life. And, and what he did is he gave us the Holy Spirit to live and dwell on the inside of us. And, and what Jesus told his disciples, he said in John 14, when he left, he said, I'm sending you another comforter. Allos parakletos in, in the Greek, and it means another of the exact same kind. It means that one to do, this was Jesus telling them, one to do in my absence what I would do if I were physically here. And, and that didn't stop with the 12 or the 120 or the, the group that followed with Jesus. You know, there wasn't just 12. There were 12 chose to be the apostles. But there was many who followed and many who were his, his disciples involved in his everyday life, life through the three years of ministry especially. And those that carried it on continued. There's those that, that didn't walk with him every day, but became key individuals, key people in the, in the Gospels and in the New Testament. But he said, have faith in God or, or have the faith of God. Well, let me ask you something. Does God's, is God limited? No. Is his faith limited? No. And so have faith in a limitless God, but also have the faith of God that, 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 set, that removes all boundaries. Now, faith comes from the Word of God. We know that. We, or we need to understand that. We don't have faith because of testimonies. Testimonies can encourage you. But faith truly comes from the Word of God. That's where the foundation lies. But our, vo our voice will speak it and release it into our lives through our prayers. Remember what Jesus told his disciples, you can do the same works that I do and greater works because I go to the Father. He said, you can ask anything in my name and I'll do it. So he gave authority in that name. That's why we sing about the name of Jesus, not just because he saved us, not just because of, uh, of what that, whether that's the most important thing. But along with that salvation came also the authority as a believer to, be, to walk that out and pray and, and move mountains. And that's what he goes on to say here in verses 23 and 24. He says, I tell you in verse 23, the truth, you can say to this mountain, May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, 
and it'll happen. But you must be, you must really believe it'll happen and have no doubt in your heart. Well, I'll tell you what, when, when, you, when you begin to think of the combination of those pieces and those parts of what Jesus told him, he said, look, you're going to have faith to move mountains, but you're going to have to have faith that overcomes the doubt. There's going to be a lot of times when you m make up your mind you're going to believe God for something and doubt will come. We, we can illustrate it with, with sickness or disease or doctor's reports. We can illustrate it with finances. We can illustrate it with relationships or things that we ask for. But listen, if we go before God and we take His Word and we allow the voice of faith to speak into our hearts that Word, then we can stand on that. I, I wrote this out this afternoon. He said, I wrote out, we speak the word of God in prayer and we maintain it in our conversation afterwards. This keeps the doubt from redirecting us and stopping what we've begun in prayer. Now, that's kind of a long statement. I want to read that again. He said, I said, we, we speak the word of God in prayer and maintain it in our conversation afterwards. This keeps doubt from redirecting us and stopping what we've begun in our prayers. Now, we don't have the, the, the right to just choose or say anything, but we have the absolute responsibility to pray what God said about us and to take His Word and implement that into our prayers and begin to speak it, to begin to call that, that prayer into being by speaking it according to the Word of God. But here's a key. We've got to make that time of prayer based from the Word of God, our declaration, and then we've got to follow it with our conversation. In other words, I, 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 always, I always am saddened whenever I pray for somebody. They come to me and they ask me to pray and they have a prayer request for sickness or, or, or something like that. And we get this, we, we pray, and I mean, God is just there in that prayer. You can just sense Him, and we're praying a bold prayer, praying, believing God for something. And I get done, and I say, amen, and they say, I said, do you believe it? And they said, boy, I sure hope so. I'm like, okay, well, wait a minute. Let me rephrase this prayer. We're going to hope God we get through this. If I prayed like that, they'd go, well, well, well I asked for prayer. Well, what I ask is that we follow up with it. Now, is it easy? Huh? In fact, that's why Jesus said it. He said, you pray and you believe and don't doubt. Why did he have to say that? Because he knows doubt's coming. It's going to come, and it's going to come as a voice that opposes the faith that you've established in God and the prayer that you've declared in that bold prayer. You know, I tell you, God wants us to pray boldly. He doesn't go, oh, wow, I don't know if I can handle that. He's like, yes. We're going to look at an example here in a minute. But you know the story probably of, of when Peter said, Jesus, is that you? If that is, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus didn't go, oh, no, Peter, uh-uh, no, no, no. This is only for sons of God. This is only for me to do. No, he said, come on. Well, you know, we got to be bold. We want to be bold. But, but boldness doesn't come just because we want to. Boldness isn't just driven by, by what we don't want to endure, but it's by what we see in the Word of God, what we hear Him speak. And when the voice of faith speaks, it, it puts us in a position to move mountains. You know, I'm not going to turn there, but Ephesians 5, 1 says, to be imitators of God as dear children. Imitate God. Be like Him. He's not moved by those things. Look at verse 24. Verse 24 here in Mark chapter 11. Verse 24 says, I tell you that you can pray anything, and if you believe that you have received it, it'll be yours. Now, if that wasn't written in red, meaning it was Jesus speaking it, we'd argue with that, wouldn't we? We'd say, oh, no, we can't do that. But Jesus said we could. Now, here's the, here's the qualifier to that. Can you believe it? Well, listen, I don't have confidence and faith to believe things that don't aren't promised by God and I'm qualified for. So I got to ask myself what's the qualifications for me to be able to pray and to receive. For one thing, we've got to know that who that, that we're, Jesus is our Lord and that because of him we're righteous and we're right before God and we can come what Hebrews 4 says come boldly into the throne of grace and to obtain mercy and help in time, time of need. 
We don't come in arrogantly. We don't come in proudly, but we can come boldly into the throne room. Why? Because we're God's child and we're right because not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus has done for us and given us as that free gift of salvation. He says, he says, if you pray anything, if you believe you've received it, it'll be yours. Now notice that that tense on that, you have received it. That's what faith gets to after study and research and finding a time with God and, 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 and prayer over the situation and how to ask and what to God, what do you say about it? You spend time in the word of God until there is faith to know that there is a belief on the inside of you that when you prayed it, you know, God, it's on the way. I've received it. That's the difference in, in a hope and a desire for something to change, and it being done now. That is the, that is the challenge. See, faith, Hebrews 11, 1, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that scripture tells us that it's something that hasn't yet arrived, but except on the inside of us, and on the inside of us, it's known, it's, it's settled. We can pray with boldness and confidence and then follow that up afterwards with saying, Father, I thank you. I don't know how it can happen, but I know it will because you have said it. I'm going to hold my, my, I'm going to hold my conversation. In other words, I'm going to trust God. God, what does your promise to say about giving? It says if you give, it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. If you sow a seed or if you trust God with your tithe, he'll provide. I've seen this all of my life. Sue and I dedicated the first year of marriage. We're living this way. And we've seen God's provision, His hand, and financially all these years in all these different ways. It's amazing. It's amazing how we walk and live in that blessed life because we've trusted God. Now, has it always been easy or has there been times where it was nip and tuck? You know what that means? Nip and tuck. That means it's real close. It ain't here early. It may be 1159. It may be 1159 point whatever. But God shows up. I can tell you story after story where God made provision and where he showed up. I can also tell you story after story where when it didn't come quickly, doubt moved in. Fear moved in. Emotions moved in. So we have to train ourselves, teach ourselves, how do we walk in this? So I want to talk to you tonight, turn to Mark, Matthew chapter 14, and, and I want to talk to you about, I've got seven different w things that are spoken. It sounds like a lot. You're like, oh, Lord Jesus, we only got 15 more minutes, and how are we going to get this done? You know me, if I don't finish it up this week, we just wrap up and we'll finish it next week. I wouldn't mind preaching on this for two or three weeks. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that gets, my, get, gets me excited because this is the kind of stuff that has enabled me and Sue to walk through all that we've walked through. And it's been good, but it hadn't been without challenge. But this is one of my favorite stories in the, in the Bible where, G, where Peter steps out of the boat. But we got a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff, starting in verse 22 of Matthew chapter 14. It says, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that the disciples get back into the boat and cross over to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Now, establishing one thing, the, ver the first voice is the Jesus' voice to command them. What did he say? He, it, it didn't list it here, but he in insisted they go to the other side in the boat. So I'm sure he went to his disciples and he said, all right, boys, get in the boat, go to the other side. And I'm sure... Knowing his disciples, they probably disagreed with him at some point. They probably said, now, Jesus, I think we ought to stay here with you. It's not good that you be alone. You might be, you know, there's bears, there's wolves, there's whatever, animals there were. That, you know, you probably need, there's bad people out here. We probably better stay to protect you. So it says he insisted. I think that's why there's that, that, that uh, he, he commanded them, I think, in one of the translations. He, he said, go, you, go, you guys go. And I'm sure he said it in a stern voice that meant don't argue. But you know what he did? He established the, the next few hours of their life. He gave them a command and he said, go to the other side. So he, the first voice that I want to talk about was Jesus' voice declaring a general word. That general word was go to the other side. The general word for us, you could, you could take a lot of scripture. We read it in here. A general scripture. He, 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 the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Whatever, whatever that general word. Take that. Hear that. But now look at verse 24. 
Meanwhile, the disciples, this is Jesus is off praying, were in trouble far away from land. I love the way this New Living Translation reads sometimes. When I switched over to this here, here not too long ago, I, I thought, man, there's just some cool things. I always check it with the King James, and I always look back and, and compare the two. But I, I just love the way that states that. They were in trouble. I don't know about you, but there have been times when I was in trouble. I, I'm following God. I, I'm living for God. I'm walking for, with God. I'm doing my best, God, but I'm in trouble. There's, there's times we get in, and over, in over our head. There's times we commit to too many things. There's times, whatever, whatever it be. But they were in trouble and far away from land. They were out there in the midst of it. They were on the Sea of Galilee, and they, the boats they were in weren't that big. And, and, and if you've never, I got to see this uh, in person, and, and it's not that big. I mean, it's, it's not that big of a body of water. So when the wind really came up, it was a big deal, especially in the vessels that they're in. See, the voice of circumstance began to, te to begin to speak, and every one of their instincts said, we can die out here. Their parents and grandparents had told them, boys, don't get caught out on the lake in a boat in a storm. This was the one. Th then, then they begin to they begin to hear uh, others, it, the remembrance of the ones that they probably knew who had died in just that kind of a situation. You ever you ever, you ever get sick, have some some illness, ha or, or get diagnosed with something? And boy, you know if you're not careful, everybody and their dog will start telling you all the worst horror stories of 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 how that turned out. You know what? You better shut off is the voice of your circumstances because your circumstances will begin to speak because there's a whole lot of things that want to steal the word of God. The word of God said, go to the other side. The word of God says, I'm healed. The word of God says, I can, I can, I'll have provision. The economy, who cares? That's, that's the circumstance speaking. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19. My God will give me wisdom when I lack it. He'll show me what to do. He'll show me how to save, how to spend, how to change, how to adapt. You know what God showed Sue and I one time, uh, uh, more than once? <laughs> we're sitting here, we, we got more month at the end of the money, you know, kind of situation. And we're going to God, God, give us more money. God, give us more money. We, we need more money. God, we need more money. And one, there was one time in particular, God said, you need to change your budget. We didn't want to hear that because we liked our stuff. There was one time we had to sell a house. And you know what happened in the process of that? We had bought a house that had way too much, way too much payment. Bankers were generous. We had good credit. Yeah, sure, you can. You, you know, there's nothing wrong with half your income going to your house payment. <laughs> yeah, there is. There's a lot of bad things with that. All of a sudden, I began to repent. I began to pray. And I said, God, how do I get out of this? How do I fix this problem? I need more money. He says, no, you need less house payment. And he began to show me a track to get us out of there. And we were at eight and three-eighths interest. This was in 1999, I believe. And uh, in the first house that we bought, we were at eight and three-eighths uh, uh, interest rate on a house that made the payment too high. And God said, sell it. And, and he gave me the, the wisdom to build a, a track home. We had a, a man that he put us in contact with that had these spec homes and, and, the, the, and these spec homes. We bought this acre and a half property. I cleared it. Had big old huge cedar, uh, or not cedars, pine trees. We cleared that place, and he, he showed me how to, gave me uh, skills that I didn't have before, and helpers that gave me help, friends and things, and we built this house, and we financed, we had a set amount that we wanted, to, that we knew could finance with a payment that we could afford, and by the time we got that house sold, lived in this other one, built, built this other one, the interest rates dropped to six and a quarter. Now, from six, eight and three-eighths to six and a quarter, that's a big change. And we financed less money. So we shaved about 300, I don't know, 250, 300, I don't remember the numbers exactly, a bunch off of our, off our but all of a sudden, we didn't need more money because wisdom fixed it. See, we take the Word of God, we live this way, but my circumstances said, there's no way we can't do it, or no way we can't do it, there's no way we can't do it. But in the midst of all of that, 
We took the word of God. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God, I stand on your word. I'm hearing the voice of your word. I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to sit at the gas pumps and say, yep, it's going up. Look, it's going up. Guess we won't have enough now. Don't know how I feel this up. I'm not getting into that voice. I'm not getting into those circumstances. I'm not listening to that. I'm saying, God, I thank you that you're supplying my need. I'm going to stand in that. You know, there was another voice that spoke uh, as they go on down. So they were, they were in, uh, we'll read the rest of this verse. I guess we didn't got through it. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble, verse 24, far away from land. For a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting the heavy waves. See, they rowed those boats. And boy, they're fighting it. You ever been in there where you're fighting the heavy waves? Then in verse 25, about 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. You know, it's interesting to me right here. It said that they were terrified. Their circumstance already had them on edge. Their circumstance already said, we're, we're in trouble. But all of a sudden, they saw something they'd never seen before, a man walking on the water. They thought it was a ghost. And it says, they cried out with fear. Well, I just got to thinking about that. I'm pretty sure that there wasn't, however many, let's say there's 12 of them in the boat. They didn't in unison go, it's a ghost. No, there was one, one who probably said, probably somebody went, geez, what is that? Is that a ghost under their breath? And somebody said, it's a ghost. So there was a voice of fear spoke out. See, there's always, there's a lot of times there'll be somebody around you that loves to talk fear and loves to talk problems and loves to tell you every way that you're going to fail or every way it's not going to work. And you got to refuse to listen to that fear, the voice of fear. See, they were afraid, but somebody responded. But notice, somebody responded with those words, but then they all began to be, began to fear it affected everybody you know we have to stand in in our on our on the word of god and reject that you know when people begin to talk negative around you you don't have to quote them king james and say thus says the lord but you could sure enough say you know what i'm just gonna believe that everything's gonna be all right or, or just make the simple statement I, i'm a, i'm gonna be all right well, how are you going to do that? I'm just going, I'm going to be all right. And if they keep pressing you, then you give the word to them. They'll, quit, they'll shut up. Then you start stating what the word of God says. Well, I'm going to tell you what Philippians 4.19 says. My God shall supply all my need by, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I've seen him do it once and he'll do it again. I'm not over. I'm not under. I'm over. I'm more than a conqueror. According to Romans 8.37. I'm just going to believe God that I'm going to triumph. I'm going to overcome. I'm not going to be defeated. I'm going to win. I'm going to overcome. Well, I've seen you lose before. I don't care what you've seen before. I don't, I don't listen to you. I mean, if they just keep harassing you, just keep giving them the word. And if you fumble around and you don't know what you need to say the first, that time, then you go home, get you a little checklist. And if you have to, you get it written down. You pull it out of your pocket and say, I'm going to tell you what, my, I'm, tell you what I'm saying. I'm going to tell you what I'm listening to. You're fighting cancer. You're fighting a battle. You get the word of God. You get the scripture out so that every time somebody asks you what your condition is and how you doing, you say, well, I'm doing, I'm doing great. I'm trusting the Lord. And figure out how to make statements that line up with what you're praying and believe in God because you don't want to listen to fear's voice. You know, then uh, notice this in this verse 27, Jesus spoke to them at once. He said, don't be afraid. First thing he spoke to was their fear. Because I'm going to tell you what, fear is a powerful force of the enemy. He'll take fear and, and he'll run us into the ground with fear. He'll drive us away from the word of God. There's one thing that overcomes fear and that's faith. It is fear is actually the opposite. It's the devil's tactic. It's exactly opposite of what the word of God says. And he loves to use it against us. He said, do not be afraid. But notice what he said. This is the key. He said, take courage. I think the King James says first, it is I, do not be afraid. It reverses it. 
But Jesus' statement made a declaration. He said, first of all, do not fear, in, in the King James. Or here, he says, take courage. He was handing it to him. Take it. I preach the word. I share the word. I, 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 I talk to people. And there's so many times people reject the courage, the boldness, the word of God. Refuse to hear it. They listen to the voice of their circumstances, their past. I had a lady tell me yesterday she, she's been coming to Carrier for about, I don't know, eight or nine months. She said, I sat in my other church for 30 years not knowing what I didn't know. She came and she's hearing the word of God. She said, I've learned more in the eight or nine months, maybe a year that she's been there, than I did in 30 years in that other church. That's not the first time I've heard that. Listen, we got to go where we're hearing the word. We got to be fed in the word. If, it, if you were in a church that, that w wasn't teaching, wasn't feeding anything, you the word. But notice what he said, take courage. What, what, what does taking courage do? It stomps out fear. It cancels out fear. I'm going to tell you what, what's going on in this world can be fearful. You, you might have to trim down how much news you watch. You need to watch enough to know what these crazy people are trying to do to us. But you also need to stand, uh, be careful that you don't listen to it so much that you're consumed with fear. You've got to listen to a lot of word. You know what I try to do? I drink coffee every morning. I drink one to two cups. Well, no, I pretty much drink two cups every morning. And they're big cups, so that's probably four. But let's, let's don't get to counting now. Don't be picking on me. But I drink coffee every morning. But you know what I, I make sure I do? I offset however much coffee I drink with water. And I drink a lot of water. Why? Because I want to flush out anything, that any, any negatives from any of that other stuff. You know, I want to make sure I put into my body what it needs. I also ask God for wisdom on how. The reason I cut sweets out and sugar, and my joints hurt. Helps my joints. Uh, bread and stuff like that. All that stuff, I go to eat and that stuff, my joints, my knees hurt. I go up steps and my knees hurt. I'm, not, I'm only 56 years old. I'm too young for that stuff. But you know what? Wisdom of God. I've got to change what goes into my body to, and it affects me. So what do I need to do with the word where, where my mind and my, my spirit man are concerned? If I'm having trouble with fear, I've got to make sure that I shut the doors to fear and I begin to open myself up to God. I'm going to take the courage. Now, here's what the word that transformed their whole situation around is Jesus said, take courage. I am here. You know, in the Greek, in, in, in the King James, it just says, I am. We got to understand something. This meant something powerful to them. I, I wrote this down. Um, it meant the mighty God who is self-sufficient, self-existent, all-encompassing, without limitations, the one being in the universe, the one being in the universe who is not dependent on something else for his existence has just showed up on the scene. See, they understood Hebrew, the name of God. Th Jesus was saying Yahweh, or he was saying that, that, uh, that name that Moses was given when he went into the, to, to talk to Pharaoh that meant I am he, I am the one, I'm the all-sufficient one. I am is a significant part of this. They knew that I am, the all-sufficient one, just showed up on the scene. We got to understand when we praise the name of Jesus, why do I love those songs? Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus, there's something about that name. Because the name of Jesus, demons shudder. At the name of Jesus, we're given authority to, to, to pray. To, when Jesus shows up in, onto our scene, into our scene, doesn't matter what trouble we're in. Doesn't matter how big the waves are. Doesn't matter how, how hard the storm's blowing. His word is carrying us through. And I'm not going to be moved and put in a place of doubt because I'm trusting my God who is all sufficient. Now listen, they, they, had, to have a, the, 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 they had to make the choice to respond to when Jesus said, do not be afraid. Yeah, I am here. I am he. Now, so the, the, the voice of the storm had been talking. The voice of the circumstance was talking. The fear's voice was talking. But Jesus called 
himself, Jesus again, his voice came through, I am. I've got to be ready to, to hear that. Then in verse, uh, verse uh, 28, Peter called to him. He said, Lord, if it's really you, bid me to come or tell me to come to you walking on the water. And Jesus responded. He said, come on. Yes, come. You see, that's what Jesus does to us when we pray, when we're bold, when we trust him. Jesus is saying, he says, come. Because here's the thing. Jesus' voice spoke once again to maintain and to continue to keep moving forward in the thing that he'd already declared. What was it? Get to the other side. But Peter called and asked for something extra. He said, he said, uh, he said, bid me come or command me to come. And when the word of God came, word came through Jesus, when Jesus' word spoke, Peter stepped out of that boat and walked on the water, verse 29 says. He walked on the water. But you know what happened? His own wisdom and his own experience spoke. And he said, boy, you can't walk on water. I would imagine that he had at least one of the two or three or five behind him saying, Peter, what are you doing? You can't walk on water. They probably even said, look at this dummy. He's fixing to get really wet. But you know what? Here's the thing. He boldly moved forward on the, on the word of God, and he walked on the water. Now, the water didn't all of a sudden become a consistency that held him up. His faith in the word of God did. See, there's a whole lot of times when there's no natural reason why you ought to be able to make it, why you ought to be able to do what you do. There's no reason except the Word of God. When we set our heart to trust God and to walk this out, I'm going to tell you what, God, His speaking transforms everything. He put His faith into action. But He let His experience begin to speak, and He got His eyes off Jesus. He looked at the wind and the waves, and all of a sudden He began to sink. So what sunk him? Himself. His self. Himself. Now here's the wonderful thing is Jesus didn't just let him drown. Jesus didn't make him swim back to the boat. Jesus, as soon as he cried out, called out to him, he lifted him up. And that's the wonderful thing is Jesus in his love and compassion. But he came on down, and i got to wrap this up with this, but he said, he said, uh, verse 31, he said, immediately he reached out, grabbed him, and he said, you have so little faith, or O oh, ye of little faith. Jesus said, why did you doubt me? Now, I want to close with that thought, because something powerful uh, in, the, in the thought of that verse, the bottom of that verse 31, he called his faith little, but he said, why did you doubt me? I would think that Peter might have responded with an argument that said, I didn't doubt you. I doubted my ability, or I doubted the circumstance. I doubted the situation. But he said, no, no. I was the one thing that got you out of that boat. I was the one thing that was providing for you. I was the one thing that could, could make that happen. You, you, you let these other things crowd in, caused you to doubt. Well, listen, Jesus wasn't condemning him. He's just telling him, look, we got we to gotta rise above this. We, we got we to gotta, we gotta have more. Jesus knew where he was going. He knew what he was going to go through. Well, listen, today, I just want to challenge, tonight, I just want to challenge you. Man, hear the voice of faith speaking. Read this word like it's, like it's life. Read this word like it's God speaking to you. It's not just his spoken divine word from the past. It's a live and living word speaking now. We begin to seek God. Say, God, show me in your word. And every morning, I, I teach that, that Monday through Friday, every morning, Facebook Live, still on high call. And a lot of times, I just open my Bible. I, I, I don't even know for sure before, five minutes before, two minutes before. Sometimes I just go, well, 6.30, Lord, we got to turn this on. Where, where are we going today? Sometimes it sounds like it, I know. Most of the time, it's pretty, it's pretty decent. But you know, the last few days, it's been the thing, this has been the thing that's stirred in me. We've got to have faith to believe. We've got to trust God. Allow this word to speak to you. Hear the voice of God. So let's pray. Father, we just come before you today. And Lord, we thank you that, that Lord, our circumstances and our, our situations are all different. Lord, some people are, are just beginning this journey of faith. Some people have been walking it a long time. Lord, regardless, 
We're all the same before you. We all need Jesus as our Savior. And because we have Jesus as our Savior, we have access to the throne room of heaven. We have the ability and the capacity because of the Spirit of God living in us to know what to pray, know how to, to pray, and to seek your word. Lord, I pray that you you just let this, this word from you tonight encourage us, strengthen us, guide and direct us. God, I pray that you'd show each of us the areas that we're being we're allowing doubt and fear in. And Lord, we stand firmly on your word. I pray, Father God, that, that if there's anybody in, within the sound of my voice who has not made Jesus Christ Lord of their life, whether you're watching this live or maybe right here, or maybe years from now or months from now, you're watching this and, and you say, I don't know Jesus as my Lord. That's the beginning of it all. Because Jesus came to die for you. And Lord God, I pray that if anyone doesn't know you, that they just call on the name of the Lord right now. They say, dear Jesus, forgive me. Come to my heart and to my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I need help, Lord. And I know you're, you, you, you'll help me. Come to me. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. You know, if anybody prayed that prayer, there's a process to this. Salvation comes, but we begin that walk together as you, as you let us know so we can help you out. So as we, as we close this service out, if you need prayer, you can pr we, we can pray with you. If you'd like ever like prayer here live, we'll, we'll pray with you uh, and just uh, invite you to, to put your trust and faith in God. We're just going to close the service there tonight. We can leave all this set up. There's no sale this week, and so we're blessed to have, be able to do that. So uh, as we get ready to, to close, man, we've been blessed with rain. We've been blessed in a lot of ways, uh, but we want to also uh, just just honor God with our time. And so let's, let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for all you do for us. Um, and as Kelly said, don't, sometimes we doubt, we shouldn't doubt you. Um, my pond's full for the first time in over two and a half years. Thank you you took care of it. I mean, amen to you. I just thank you as you know, all the time we went through that drought and, and instead of doubting, we prayed and yes. you took care of it. Um, thank you for all you do be with everyone as they go home. And if, if anyone, um, uh, tonight said that prayer and has Jesus in their heart, um, talk to Kelly, talk yes. to any one of us elders, we'll help you start on your new life. And, uh, just want to thank you for all you do and, and keep our country, uh, in our prayers. And, and we know you can fix this country. Yes. Only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for being here. Man, I tell you what, if this is your first time, we welcome you. If you've been here a lot of times and you haven't signed up for uh, any of the information, got any information, there's cards out there, uh, maybe. And I have business cards if you need them. So be blessed. Have a great week.